It's a mighty hard road that my poor hand is hold. My poor feet has traveled a hot, dusty road. Well, there's an effort to uh, clean up the camp and get everything set up for winter, so we are putting floors into uh, the, the service, the community tents. So that's a mess tent back there, and I guess it's also still the food tent. And we're doing the same thing for the medic tent. And what else has happened, Isaac? Well, BNY told us that we were not allowed to stay, so I think that by showing that we are going to stay and making it winterized with yurts, if you've checked out the yurts, right? They're awesome. Um, there's one right there, right there. It's made out of uh, housing insulation, uh, so we don't we don't need propane propane heaters. We just need body heat. Um, and they're, they're say, one of their reasons for wanting to the evict us. Closer. One of the reasons for them wanting to evict us is uh, that we had propane heaters here or, uh, and things like that. Um, but if we have these hexi yurts, there's no need for propane anyway, so their argument is undercut. Yeah, so that's what we're doing today, and it's just a wonderful, warm community feeling here. I just was like filled with happiness when I came down and saw the new mess tent going up and everybody walking around helping with things, and it's just really beautiful. It's really important to me that this camp stay alive because it's the first time I've ever seen democracy or freedom in my life. So, yeah. You know, a lot of people think Pittsburgh is a sleepy little town, and there's no activists here. No, we were just talking about how, uh, as far as we know, we're one of the only big city occupations that's still going and digging in throughout the winter. So uh, Boston just got evicted, um, but we're digging in our heels. And um, I'm really excited about the eviction notice that we posted for BNY Mellon. Project! Because, Project! Uh, as you walk! As you walk! Through the camp! Through the camp! Before dark! Before dark! Pick up trash and debris! Pick, pick up trash and debris! We won't be able, we won't be able to find it, to find it after dark! After dark! There are trash bags! There are trash bags! Up on the Ross Street entrance! Up, up on the Ross Street, Street entrance. entrance! Thank you! Thank you! Uh, yeah, because BNY uh, gave a notice for us to leave. They said that they'd tolerated our presence. Um, and we replied with our own notice, uh, letting them know that the people of Pittsburgh have tolerated their presence uh, for a while now. And they're international criminals who have defrauded billions of dollars from pension funds um, with international currency scams. Uh, so we're not the criminals. We're exercising our constitutional rights as American citizens. So we would like them, the actual criminals, to leave. So yeah, that's what's up. Thanks for asking. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Paul. I'm here in Occupy Pittsburgh on the Mellon Green. Um, I'm actually from Chicago, uh, representing Occupy Chicago. Um, I've been in Occupy Pittsburgh for about 24 hours, and I'm really amazed at what I'm seeing here. Uh, when I drove in, I was pleasantly surprised uh, to see that Occupy Pittsburgh still has a camp. And not only that, um, is winterizing and uh, getting its act together. There's this big tent that just went up that uh, obviously sends a signal that um, uh, we're not going anywhere, the occupation is not leaving, and indeed uh, we are uh, digging our heels in, and I'm really uh, excited to see that. Um, I think Occupy Pittsburgh is uh, one of the last major occupations that still has an uh, actual campsite, and as you can see, the, the real energy and enthusiasm uh, among the occupants here is phenomenal. So um, my understanding is the situation is currently in the courts. Um, perhaps tomorrow some decision will be rendered. Um, this is pseudo private property, pseudo public property. Uh, I think uh, we should expect the courts to unfortunately hold up the rights of private property and uh, begin the proceedings of eviction. Um, I think Occupy Pittsburgh can potentially enter into negotiations. It has the support of the city. Maybe relocate uh, to a different spot, but I know 
occupations become um, emotionally attached to, to where they've been. And I think uh, we do have a right to be here. I'm personally on a radical road trip across the occupied land. Um, I went to Occupy Detroit. i um, very pleased with what I saw there. Uh, participated in a moratorium on foreclosure action at a family home uh, that were threatened with eviction. Um, lots of awesome radical stuff happening there. Then I went to Columbus and now I'm here. And uh, really encouraged with what I see. Um, a little self-promo, you can check out my site, OccupyThisHeart.com. It's sort of a news aggregator. Um, we do some commentary analysis as well. Um, you can follow this trip. Uh, also tweet at OccupyThisHeart, so check that out. Um, also, I'm trying to get a jump start on the G8 and NATO Summit. That's going to be in Chicago in late May of this upcoming year, really on the, uh, on the horizon line. So if we want to keep the narrative compelling for Occupy, um, we need some long-term goals and dates, and I think uh, late May, uh, you know, really the, the start of spring is a great time to get the activism rolling again, especially in the election year. Uh, ideally, maybe we can have a conference or a convention uh, so we can work through our, our own issues uh, simultaneously as the uh, G8 and NATO, the generals and the banksters are working on theirs and uh, really uh, present an alternative to war and austerity. So I invite you all to come out to Chicago and enjoy Grand Park. Uh, Chicago is a great city, uh, sometimes catering a little much to the 1%. But uh, come out for Jane and NATO, and uh, let's find some solutions to uh, these challenges we face. Because I think um, if we don't channel all our energy and uh, sort of change direction, uh, pivot, uh, society is uh, only heading toward greater crisis, conflict, and suffering. So um, uh, resist that, please. And uh, I'm out. Thanks. Hi, my name's Haley Rolf. Um, I'm painting this sign right here. It says, go ahead. Um, this park is ours. It previously said that. Um, I liked the message, and I thought it needed a little bit sprucing up, so I came and put some red on it. And if you see over here, I'm going to put some faces of people. I'm going to put faces of people all around it. People in protest. Um, so that when BNY Mellon or if there's any kind of police issues, <laughs> um, people get to see a good, strong message. And they'll uh, get to see some art that goes along with the message we have here today. So... I like the whole movement. I mean, I, I don't see the movement as uh, cut up into little pieces. So I like that the movement supports artists. I feel very alienated um, in our society as an artist. And I feel supported here by the people. So I want to support them with what I have. I'm not very strong. I can't lift up big, heavy logs and stuff. What they're doing here, I don't really know. but. I don't have much strength, but I, I can make art and spruce the place up, put some colors. I think that art says things that words can't always say. Like how we have these actions that we're doing here today. You can't always, we can't always just talk about things. We have to get together and do things. And I think when you make art, it can portray a message better than just writing something down. I know this is written down, but when people see it, I think that it's going to make them think, I don't know, make them happy that someone else feels that way, um, basically. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, you're welcome. Make it immortal, an immortal message of um, equality and hope and um, social change and justice. All right, thank you. Um, these are books from the Occupy Pittsburgh Library and um, we like to label them all. So on the spine they say Occupy Pittsburgh Library or sometimes the People's Library. And so these are books that people have donated for the benefit of people who are um, occupying at the camp or who come by here for um, some education. So, 
um, part of my contribution for working on our cleanup and organization for today is just to um, help do some stuff organizing the library, doing some labeling, and then putting things into genres. Um, well, having access to knowledge that anyone can have and the, the past, everything that's ever been recorded is essential for people to be able to have access to without having to purchase um, a book every time you want to read something and so it's a um, collective agreement that we have in supporting our libraries and supporting um, knowledge and entertainment and um, I think that it's one of the the greatest things that we have available um, in this country and elsewhere so can you recommend any books or would you recommend one book or do you have any favorite books um, that kind of speak to this whole occupation? Um, well, possibly The Shock Doctrine by Naomi Klein. I don't know if we have that in the library here. I just started organizing this one. Um, a lot of donations have come in. Um, I'm excited to read the um, autobiography or maybe it's a biography of Pablo Neruda, which I just found in here. So that's not quite relevant exactly, but... So if, Na if Naomi Klein is happening to watch this, we want her to donate some books to the Occupy libraries around the country. Sure, that would be great. <laughs> How about People's History of the United States? Do you ever read that one? I did, yes. Um, actually, I was at Wall Street um, at the beginning of October when Naomi Klein was there speaking and um, there was also lots of people were donating um, many copies of A People's History of the United States. So there's always, there's always a lot of copies available or there were before um, Bloomberg and the New York Police Department destroyed the library there. The 5,555 books I think so I'm sure they'll have more. I think it's a great, um, great way to read the history that is often almost never taught in in our classrooms here yeah it's a step it's a step-by-step -step process and this is the, one of the first steps i think the movement has major teeth and it's not going to go away with evictions of any one site this is about people who are standing up it's the people of the world we're seeing it all over the world people are saying enough enough and we can change things i think that's